Welcome to Talking Trash, and today we're continuing the talk on natural dyes, making your own dyes. And so last week we talked about making your own dyes for clothing. So if you wanted to use spices, you could use spices. You can use fruits and vegetables. I think this is so pretty, isn't it? Wouldn't that be a great picture? Um, you can use fruits and vegetables to, to dye clothing, to dye yarn, that kind of thing. But how about to dye, um, put some coloring in frosting. How about for Easter eggs? That's, that's uh, either just past or just coming up, depending on when you're watching this. Um, really, really simple way to do that. So basically, you could use actually, when we, when we boil down the cranberries, you can take cranberries, boil them down into a bowl, take a couple cups of cranberries, boil them in a, uh, in a pan and um, boil them down and then get the color so that you have the, the cranberry color. This actually would be great for frosting too because cranberries, wouldn't that be cranberry frosting? Mm. And it'd be really pretty, pretty pink. Um, now, if, if you're doing it for frosting, it would be okay to use cranberries. If you were using the spice, and this is, got, this is kind of uh, very interesting. It's for um, rice and that kind of thing. It's, I think, a Middle Eastern type uh, spice. I don't know if I'd want that in my frosting. So that might be more for eggs or yarn. Um, and cabbage, that might be an interesting one. Uh, the color would definitely work, and then you could add some food color, or um, flavoring, flavoring to it. So let's say a little mint. And, and you would not um, and you would not taste the or not taste the cabbage as much, just like when you uh, when you make your own window cleaner with vinegar, you can add a little essential oil to that, and you don't smell the vinegar. So we can do all kinds of things that that we can do in our own home that we have in our own home that we do not have to um, go to the store and buy. It maybe requires a little bit more work on the front end, but it's much better for us, and it's pennies per per ounce when we use it. So basically what we do is we take, um, this is actually the cabbage. I'm going to show you that one. So um, the cabbage, purple when we start out, and then you can kind of, it looks, looks kind of interesting. Here's the, here's the, um, the, I would say the cabbage pulp. I don't know if that's a word or not. Now I'm not sure what you'd use this for. Maybe it's for next year for St. Patty's Day you could use something, but I'm not sure if your guests are going to want to have uh, green pizza or blue pizza. I'm not sure if you're going to use the cabbage for something. But then you can take this uh, this dye and I'm going to put it in a bowl so that you can see. And actually, this is mixed with blue and the green. I mix a little bit of cranberries and a little bit of. Um, Cabbage, red cabbage. Now, look at that. Purple. Is that cool? And that's just natural. And you can dye whatever you want to dye, whether it's Easter eggs. Don't forget to use vinegar if you're using, um, if you're dyeing Easter eggs. That helps make it set. I just want to give you a couple ideas of, of um, what else, what other, what else you can use that's maybe in your backyard for um, for dyeing whatever it is you want to dye. Let's say for uh, the shades of orange, you can use um, onion, uh, the skin of an orange onion or a, a yellow onion, carrots in your refrigerator. You can boil those up and, and do the same process, but get the, the, get the color out of the carrots. Um, eucalyptus. So that would be the, uh, the orange color. How about a little bit of brown? And that one we can kind of figure out the walnuts or dandelion uh, roots. How about uh, bark, different kinds of bark? Shades of pink, strawberries, cherries, raspberries. So we just have to kind of think outside the box. Have fun experimenting. Nature will help you.